How are you people? Shall we discuss meningioma today? Meningioma is very 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 important for your exam. So you know what you should always read for such important topics. Now read more from multiple textbooks. Then only you will get all the information and get more marks. So as this is a very 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 high priority topic, listen carefully to every word and go and read your textbook because don't depend on our YouTube videos for hundred um, percent perfect information. Now meningioma. Let's start meningioma. Meningioma means what you can understand. Meninges means you know what, no? Meninges are the coverings of the brain, correct? So from there this uh, cancer arises. So it is meningioma. Oma means what? Benign. So there can be malignant meningioma that will be called as invasive meningioma. Okay, very rare though. Mostly it is benign only. So this is very common um, and. Uh, it is 20% of the intracranial tumors. So what you should know? You should know that it is common, so you should know more about it. And it is also important for the exam, so you should know about it. Read this one, read this sentence now. It is arising from the arachnoid. Okay. So actually it is the meningothelial cells of arachnoid. Just like you have epithelial cells, you have meningothelial cells of the arachnoid layer. Usually this uh, uh, tumor will be attached to the dura and it will be compressing the brain. Fine. Mostly benign, we already told you, it is slow growing, <clears throat> but it can be invasive, that will be malignant. Invasive meningioma will be malignant. <clears throat> now, usually these are solitary or they can be multiple also, they say. They say everything and then they say one more, like which is completely contradictory. Well, where are the common sites? Front half of the brain, head, sorry, front half of the head. What is there in the front half of, of, half of the head, the cerebral convexities? The midline of the falx, falx, falx cerebri. What is this falx cerebri, guys? Do you remember this diagram from first year textbook? Yes. See, this is the anterior end of the falx cerebri. This is the dural fold. Okay, meningeal fold. This is the falx cerebri. Sagittal sulcus will be here. This is falx cerebelli. It's a 3D image, okay? Okay, all this, okay? And also commonly seen in olfactory groove. See, olfactory groove also is in front part of the head, no? Olfactory nerve and all that. Olfactory groove. <coughs> See here, the yellow part. Olfactory groove. Fine? <coughs> you need this diagram or we can leave it? Olfactory groove is for that. Then, fox cerebra, you know. So in all these areas, you can find meningioma more commonly, okay? Let's move on guys. So this slide you understood, right? What meningioma is, from where it arises, then uh, they're mostly benign, they can usually be solitary and they where will be in front part of the head, okay? Some images here to show meningioma. This is from uh, Pathology Robbins textbook. This is a CT image. You can see this contrast meningioma. You can see it in this. Then etiopathogenesis. You should know mostly in adults it will be and mostly female. And if they have a history of exposure to radiation, it can happen. Mainly what happens, you know, chromosome, um, chromosome 22 will have a locus. <coughs> 22q that is on chromosome 22 okay there will be a locus 22q this q this two some more details you can find in the textbook okay in that what happens this uh, t this q part gets deleted right so this is where this nf2 gene will be present normally so this is the neurofibromatous 2 gene this is a tumor suppressor which is a good thing but what happens, there is deletion of this locus where this NF2 gene had to be there. So there will be no NF2 gene in these people. So this Merlin gene, this Merlin gene won't be there. Okay, now if this Merlin gene is not there, they are very prone to getting this meningioma. Is it clear? Understood or very, very difficult to understand? Let's call our friend and ask him. Are you understanding meningioma? Okay, what you understood till now, the chromosome 22, that locus Q something will get deleted. So there is no neurofibromatous 2 gene which codes for Merlin protein and these people are prone to meningioma. Very good. 
Now, what happens? Uh, one more thing you can know here. Um, usually, clinical features and all when you see, right? There will be headache and all that. And uh, you know, because of the compression on the brain, based on where it is compressing, there can be symptoms related to those, like um, auditory or speech, right? All that. Now. <clears throat> These also express, these meningiomas, they express progesterone receptors. So what happens in pregnancy, progesterone increases and the uh, progesterone receptors on these meningioma will make sure that this meningioma becomes more and pregnant women can complain of um, headache and all that which can could be a meningioma. Okay, But it is slow growing, remember, it will grow very slowly only. Now... Mostly it will be slow growing, right? So we can never say for everything they will say slow growing and then they will say it can be fast growing in men or something, okay? And then coming to the gross. Now, how does it look? This is the outer one, gross, and this is a cut surface, okay? Taken from uh, Harshmohan pathology. <clears throat> so, look at the gross. It is well circumscribed, obviously well circumscribed, right? Benign, you can see it in all the images we saw till now, well circumscribed only. Solid, spherical, hemispherical mass of varying size. Okay. So definitely you can see spherical. So well circumscribed, solid, spherical mass. Tumor is firmly attached to dura. We told you this in the initial part only. It is attached to the dura. It indents the surface of the brain. That is, it compresses the brain, but it never invades, rarely invades. If it invades, it's called as invasive meningioma. The out overlying bone usually shows hyperostosis. So the bone, which is above, right, that shows hyperostosis. What is hyperostosis? More bone cells, correct? So two way, both the ways they have explained. Down the brain is there, brain is getting compressed, but not invaded. And above the bone is there, bone is showing hyperostosis. That is the skull, <coughs> right? Cut surface. Look at the cut surface now. Firm, fibrous, sometimes with foci of calcification. So there will be fibrous, firm calcification. Look at this. The tumor mass is circumscribed. Arrow. Here is the tumor mass circumscribed. Irregular surface convulsions and prominent blood vessels. It is a firm, it is firm in consistency with peripherally adjacent thick firm dural tissue. The cut surface is firm and fibrous. Not very clear where exactly they are trying to tell. If you can understand, please let us know. <coughs> let us move on to the microscopy of meningioma. Do you want to come back for the next video and see the meningioma microscopy? Because... Um, what else is there left? That's all right. Microscopy and there are like five things here. Come back for the microscopy. We will meet in the next video. Let's revise what we have seen so far. Meningioma from the arachnoid uh, layer. That is the meningothelial cells of arachnoid. This much you should write. Meningothelial cells of arachnoid. Oops, the color doesn't suit. Hold on. arises from the meningothelial cells of arachnoid. They are um, benign, mostly benign. They can metastasize, they can become invasive. They are generally solitary, but they can be multiple also rarely. Front half of the head is affected more. Cerebral convexities midline along the falx cerebri, falx cerebri olfactory groove. Then we saw the images. This is a cut section. This is a CT. Etiopathogenesis mostly female. The chromosome 22 where the neurofibromatous 2 gene is located, that part gets deleted. So the Merlin protein will be absent. So these, can, uh, these tumors express progesterone receptors and hence during pregnancy the complaints will be more. Gross we saw, spherical, well circumscribed, solid, mass uh, attached to tumor, compressing the brain, overlying bone shows hyperostosis. Cut surface shows firm fibrous foci of calcification. 
Why? Because obviously it's calcified, it will be firm, right? Fibrous, that's why it is firm. In the next video, we will continue with the microscopy. Come for the next video, okay? Bye-bye. Say bye, babies.